The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue, and there was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if you would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. We have yet another example in today's gospel of the fierce opposition that Jesus runs into with the religious hardliners who were obsessed with following the letter of the law and missed the whole point of mercy and compassion. Jesus knows exactly what's in their hearts and so they're lined up and they're watching him and they're looking for some kind of an excuse to be able to condemn him. And so Jesus puts this critically important question to them. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? In other words, all of our laws are meant to help us create a better society, to live in harmony and peace with one another. Jesus sees that. The Pharisees, on the other hand, are the interpreters of the law, and so that gives them a tremendous amount of power, so they don't care two nickels about compassion and mercy. It's all about this rigid interpretation. And when Jesus, and this is, I think, the only example of a miracle that he institutes through anger, He's not not angry at the man. He's filled with compassion for the man, but he's angry at the hardness of their hearts. And so to make an example of compassion, the man is healed through Jesus' word. Now, an interesting little detail in the story is that the Pharisees go out and take counsel with the Herodians. Why is that interesting? Because the Pharisees and the Herodians were enemies to each other. The Herodians were very secular. They sided with King Herod, who was anything but religious. And here you got these religious hardliners lining up with the very secular uh, supporters of the king. But as the old saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so you get two people who hate Jesus and they line up to find some excuse to be able to kill Jesus. This tension in the religious society is not foreign to us today where we find a lot of tension within our country and a lot of tension within our church. Jesus' answer to this is to reach out with compassion and to continue to be faithful to the mission that the Lord has entrusted to him. Sometimes it seems hopeless in our society as we look at the religious divide and we look at the political divide within our country and just kind of shrug our hands and say, what can we do about this? Well, today's reading is paired with this famous reading of David going up against Goliath. Now, if we talk about impossible odds, this is the quintessential story of the little guy going up against the behemoth, isn't it? And how does David take on Goliath? He trusts in the power of the Lord. And matter of fact, as Goliath is taunting him, saying, 
you're just a youth and you're coming against me. I'm a giant, I'm a strong man. And David says, you come against me with a sword and a spear. I come against you in the power of the Lord. That's our strength. That's where we want to find our hope in the midst of the tensions and the worries and the anxieties and there are all kinds of problems in contemporary society. Let's take a cue from David coming up against seemingly impossible foe of trusting in the Lord. And how does David defeat the giant? He takes five smooth stones and it's with only one of those stones that he hurls at the giant, impeds itself in Goliath's head, and he falls to the ground. That image of the five smooth stones has been picked up with by Our Lady in the apparitions at Medjugorje. Those apparitions were started on June 25th, 1981. So it'll be 43 years that Our Lady has been appearing to these young visionaries at Medjugorje. And the image that Our Lady used, which was hearkening back to this image of David, is to use five stones to defeat the enemy. The enemy not being political forces, the enemy not being forces within the church, the enemy being the forces of evil that stir up opposition and hatred, discouragement in our society. What are the five stones that Our Lady recommends to all of us? Number one, prayer, that we pray the rosary daily. Number two, fasting, that we fast twice a week. She recommends bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays. For many of us, especially older folks, that isn't realistic. But some kind of fasting, whether it's giving up food or whether it's giving up television or whether it's giving up some special treat, some kind of fasting that pinches, especially on Wednesdays and Fridays. So, rosary, fasting. Number, th number three, monthly confession. There's something powerful in coming before the priest and acknowledging our brokenness and our sinfulness. I know for many of us, confession has fallen to the side. We simply confess our prayers directly to the Lord. But here's the irony. The 12-step program in the United States and around the world is continuing to grow because so many people are struggling with addictions. And what does the 12-step program recommend? That they make a fifth step, which is to confess to God, to ourselves, and to another human being our, the exact nature of our faults. So you want to get freed from your addiction. The 12-step program essentially says, go to confession, because it works. There's power in naming to another human being the nature of our faults. And what confession adds to that is the priest represents Christ. So you're not confessing your, your sins to just a human being. You're confessing your sin in the sacrament of confession to Christ. Number four, here the lady, Our Lady sets the bar pretty low, but for, for many in society, it's a hard bar. Go to mass on Sundays. Go to Mass at least once a week and receive Holy Communion. Now I know many of you are daily communicants. There you're, you're jumping higher than, than Our Lady asks. Keep up the good work. But she says to everyone, go to Mass at least, at least on Sunday. And many people have fallen away from that. They prefer to just watch Mass on the internet. And the fifth one, that, that, that she recommends is that we pray the scripture daily. Pick up your Bible, read the Bible daily. So prayer, especially the rosary, fasting, 
Wednesdays and Fridays, some kind of, kind of fast, monthly confession, communion and mass at least once a week, read the Bible daily. Those are the five stones that Our Lady for the last 42 years has been saying we need to practice if we want to defeat the enemy. We're not going to do it simply by electing better officials. We're not going to do it simply by writing our newspapers. Okay, all of those things are important. But essentially, to see the battle that's going on in our society, in our church, in our world right now, is essentially a spiritual battle. It's a battle for our hearts. It's a battle for our souls. It's so easy to become discouraged or intimidated or frightened. But we have this wonderful example in the story of David going up against Goliath of his trust is in the Lord. That's where our trust needs to be. Jesus, in the midst of the opposition today, doesn't lose heart. Yeah, there's anger, but his anger leads him to compassion and mercy. Let's pray that whatever frustrates us in our societies today, that it just doesn't lend up to raise up, our, raise up our, our fists and fight, that it leads us to even greater compassion and greater strength, relying on the strength of the Lord. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.